Microsoft's purpose is in service of your purpose. And again, 2024 is the year that partners come out as the leading edge of the spear on, on, on finding this buyer intent. You show up to every meeting and demonstrate why you are relevant. Every day I have to force myself to make sure that I'm taking one step ahead in terms of my own learning. That flywheel of success is where you will build momentum and that momentum will continue and then you feed into the other systems to say, this is what we did, this is how we did it together. Chelsea Berlucci leads the co-selling function for Google Cloud North America region. And I'm so excited to have her join us as she describes the role of co-selling, the importance of the co-selling function, and how organizations like yours can more effectively co-sell with Google Cloud. Chelsea, welcome to the podcast. Absolutely, happy to be here. So we've been talking a little bit about your role and how it's evolved, and I was hoping you could spend some time with our listeners. You're in a space that I, just truly I'd love and work with these partners on, which is on co-selling. And I was hoping you could deep dive for our listeners and viewers mm -hmm. about your role and the mission of your organization at Google. Yeah, absolutely. So as you said, uh, my team does co-sell. So right now I'm leading a team, what we call, I'm the head of the, our sub-regional co-sell team for North America. And you and I did get to meet last year. We got to meet at the ISC Forum in New York. So hopefully I get to see you again this summer. Uh, last year, I was really working closely with our ISVs, and I still work very closely with them. Um, a lot of folks in, in the ISV organization do what's called an ISV specialist role, or they're what we would name also a partner development manager, where they cover a specific ISV. In terms of my team and my role, we do what's called co-sell. So we're really this team that's right. at the front edge. We are working with customers. We're working with sellers to set a strategy around adopting the partner ecosystem to drive forward. Now, I did that last year. I was hired into that role in April 2022. We had this small but mighty team, which was fabulous. And we really aligned to each of our subregions and our industries to say, hey, look, we have this opportunity to grow your business and grow your customer's business by using our independent software vendors, our ISVs, and their third-party products that run in Google Cloud. Now, this, this year, at the beginning of the year, I was asked to take on more of an extended sp scope in my role, which has been uh, very interesting and challenging, um, all the things at this point. Sure. Yeah. And, and that means that beyond ISV, my team also covers services now. So I've taken on a new team of individuals that, that have been at Google, but really instead of covering just ISV, we are covering that entire partner ecosystem. So again, when a customer comes to us or when we're working with our sales organization, we can say, hey, what is your strategy to execute this year? And what is that strategy inclusive of the partner ecosystem? We get really get to be the advocates for, for our partners and coach our sellers on how to co-sell with, with partners along the way. So that's really the, the evolution of, of my role since you, you saw me last. So things have certainly changed. I would say we're doing some of these similar motions, just driving more rigor around that whole co-sell process here. It, it's part of our mission in general. So the partner ecosystem has, is really standardized on, on what that looks like. And as you can imagine, you know, it's really to work with our partner ecosystem to make sure our customers are adopting Google Cloud technologies. And although that can be interpreted up and down and, and how you go after that mission uh, in, in a couple of different ways, it really helps all different parts and pieces of our partner ecosystem within North America in Google Cloud to drive towards that one thing is really supporting our customers the right way as, as they're trying to adopt more Google Cloud, as they're trying to join the story with us. Yeah, such an important function, in fact. And I wanted to spotlight on this because a lot of organizations at the hyperscaler level, there's this division of labor. Mm -hmm. right? So if I'm an ISV, I might have a partner development person or whether, whatever the role is called. And they're really focused in on the business development of that organization, technological development, maybe the overall arching business strategy. But often what's missed is this effective co-selling piece. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping you just described it actually, but um, people don't always understand what co-selling means, right? So I was hoping we can kind of double click on what is effective co-selling and what isn't it from your perspective. 
No, this is a great question because I think co-selling is is a newer ter- term, right? We're hearing it a lot yeah. in technology companies. We're hearing it a lot in sales organizations, and we're starting to see more and more individuals adopt this as even a title in what their their jobs are really uh, entailed to. And so, it, yes. it, it being that more modern term at, at its baseline, the simple answer here is co-selling is really when two or more organizations come together to sell a complementary solution to a customer that they've identified. And we see this where, for an example, again, we've talked about ISVs, which is part of the organization that I support, and that's our independent software vendors. These are organizations that have said, hey, we want to go to market with Google Cloud so much so that we're going to invest in their technology. We're going to run applications in Google Cloud and we're going to list our product in the Google Cloud marketplace. And now on the other side of that, Google Cloud has also made this mutual investment by way of adding resources and tools and, and things that these companies can leverage people really to support that motion and a co-sell team. And so we're invested in saying, hey, look, ISV, thanks for going to market with us. And here's how we're going to jointly do that. Let's take a look at the customer, what that customer needs and what solution we can provide to them. And when it comes to things like ISV and co-selling, we're talking a lot about solution completeness or out-of-box solutions that we may have, again, that are, are running on Google Cloud. On the other side of that, as I said, you know, my team also covers services partners, and that can be our systems integrators that have these fabulous solutions or services that are driving Google Cloud. Maybe we have customers that are looking to adopt our technologies and set up a landing zone. They haven't really started with Google Cloud, or they've identified a larger workload, a data center migration, and they want to provide those services too. So along those ways, it's working together with these organizations and figuring out how we can provide that end solution or end service to the customer by co-selling together. That's, you know, again, the highlight of of what co-selling is and how we interpret it here at Google Cloud and how we actually go to market with a motion like that. What it isn't is, you know, what we're probably more familiar with if you've grown up in technology or any sort of organization where maybe you're an OEM or even a hyperscaler or an independent software vendor, and you typically have what's called a reseller. And this would be an organization that has decided to say, hey, we want to take your product or your service and we want to resell it to an end customer. A lot of times that's a you know a mutually agreed upon uh, commercial contract. They get a certain amount of, of money for each of these sales, and then they can go directly to the customer and resell your product. With co-selling, it, it really comes to that baseline word that we love here, and that's partnership, yeah. right? We get to both be invested in the process and support each other through it. And really the customer comes out on top here, which is great because we really stop to pause to learn and understand what a customer needs through this journey too. Yeah, I think what you had to say here is really relevant to the conversation we've been having about how it used to be a push, right, mm-hmm. to the customer. Now the customer is dictating the the route, right? They're saying, I want to buy from Google. I want to buy, I might want to stitch together two solutions. Mm-hmm. I might want to take an SI solution and an ISV solution. And I want to, I want to burn down against my agreement with Google to do so. And they're help and you're working with them to effectively coordinate between the multiple parties, multiple partners involved. Absolutely. We are. And I think, you know, We've talked about this in the past, but we see an organization really evolve what they want to offer to a customer. They take a step back and they say, okay, I have this great partnership with Google Cloud, which is, you know, formidable hyperscaler in the industry right now. And that's, that's great. But oftentimes you need to think more about that because as you have these conversations with a customer, they're going to want more than one thing. They're looking at big picture and that means more products, more solutions, more services. So we even say to our partners, whether it be a service partner, a sell partner or build partner, what we call our ISVs is take a look at also our Google Cloud ecosystem. Where can you make further relationships and partnerships to then advance yes. your opportunities and what you're providing to a customer too. So we don't, we're certainly at that, um, at the center of that in that partnership, but we also have, again, this vast partner ecosystem of thousands of partners where everyone can start to work together to piece together what a, a customer is really looking for. 
Yeah, I think this area is so misunderstood by many organizations, right? Where they they miss they miss the whole buyer's journey mm-hmm. in the process, how you're getting there. And I think you're covering that specifically and maximizing the relationship, working with Google, and then working within their own ecosystem to maximize the results that they're trying to solve for. I'd like to double click on you though in your career journey, right? Because you know, this is you've had an amazing career journey at Google. Uh, an amazing career journey in general. And I was hoping maybe you you can spend a moment with our listeners and viewers here on how you got to this spot in your career, Chelsea. Yeah, of course. Um, So a little history on Chelsea. uh, So I've been at Google now for six years, but I'll I'll back it up. So uh, prior to Google, I was at Cisco for 10 years. And that's where I started my career. I started right out of college, actually, got my offer letter in my email on my drive home from Thanksgiving break for Thanksgiving break, uh, senior year in college, which is pretty exciting. Wow. So it makes for a really great rest of the senior year, of course, uh, to be able to sign at the dotted line and know that, you know, you're pretty much taken care of once you graduate at that point. But so I started just a, a couple months again after I graduated from college at Cisco and what was called their Cisco Sales Associates program. And you've probably heard of it. A lot of other organizations have these programs where they take in new grads from college or maybe graduate school, and they teach them the ins and outs of the organization, the technology, soft skills that they need to be launched into the field as a seller. So I did that in North Carolina for nine months, and then I moved straight out to Boston. I I packed my car with most of my belongings. Some I'm still, I I probably left at my parents' house at that point, and and, and got a place in, in Boston, a town that I actually never been to, and took an outside sales role with Cisco. And, and that, I would say, provided so much of foundation of, one, my career for, for my entire journey, but also this role that I'm in today. I, I really gained my sales chops, I would say, there and, and a lot of bumps and bruises, but also because I am a very competitive person, it was something that I was excited to do. So I was at Cisco for 10 years, and you really learn, one, not only to, you know, how to truly qualify a customer, how to work with customers, but Cisco does, you know, you can fact check me on this, 95 plus percent of their business through a value-added reseller through partners. Absolutely. And so they also have this really strong partner ecosystem that is is really seen as gold standard in a lot of industries. And one of the first lessons you also learn at Cisco is how do you actually partner and those that do it successfully are going to learn how to scale their business the right way. But also, again, it, at the root of all of this is meet with their their customer needs. So I, I built that, as I said, that foundation for 10 years. And it was going to meetings with partners. It's leaving a meeting, calling a partner and updating them on the status of the meeting. It's putting together strategy with partners. Uh, and they become some of your best friends. One of them... Um, I'm excited to see at, at Google Cloud Next soon. He and I have started our careers really together and have kind of grown up in the business. So it's been interesting to see a lot of the things that he's done. He's still at a partner, which you know I value a lot. And I remember one, one time we were going out to meetings in Vermont, we were carpooling together and we planned how he was going to propose to his wife. So you really get close to, to your partners if you're doing it the right way. She said yes. Yeah. And, yeah. And they have you know this beautiful family now and it's been incredibly successful successful, but it, that built that foundation. And then after 10 years at, at Cisco, sorry, I was really thinking, this is the point in which I need to look at, hey, do I want to stay at Cisco or do I want to explore other opportunities? And at, at that point, it was everything you heard about was cloud, 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 cloud. And I thought, yes. okay, I have this backdrop of really technology sales and even what's in the data center, but let's see what this evolution is, is about, right? And so I, I got a role at Google that was also in direct sales. I wanted to go into people leadership, but I'm also a firm believer of working for someone that has done your job before is a lot better of experience than someone that hasn't. And whether that means you're a manager and you have maybe an open rec on your team and you are backfilling yourself so you learn what it's like to sit in your team's shoes. Or, you know, if you're actually going for a position, you've you've at least done it for a little while. So I learned 
the Google way of selling, what the technology was like, nice. what the customers were really worried about, how to make them comfortable and confident with what we had. But then also my first week on the job was meeting what we then called our, our partner sales managers, which is the team that I lead now. And the PSM at the time was incredibly helpful. He had the same kind of background that I did where knows how to partner and why partners are there to scale your business, but also make you and the customer successful. So it was great to, to build out a different strategy. Yeah. Uh, as I progressed at, at Google, I really got in deeper with our ISV organization. And I started to do a lot more business with our ISVs. This was actually a new function for me to learn. Yes. We didn't we didn't do this at, at Cisco. So knowing that an, another organization was running on top of Google Cloud and by the way, I could sell it and we incentivize our sellers to do so was pretty cool. So I got close with several of our partners and I got to learn a lot more about my customer's business because I wasn't just talking to them about what Google Cloud could provide. I was asking them broader questions and then instead of thinking, oh, I can't do that at Google, I was all, I was starting to think. Let me see who of our partners can can do this to provide it. So it got me in a lot more conversations, and it, it made me understand that this really made you one of these invaluable assets to your customer too. So I became more passionate about it, and uh, luckily for me, they decided to invest in the ISC organization. They grew it, and I, I received the role that I, I got in, in April 2022, leading the co-sell team for ISC. So that's really, that's my journey of, you know, being you know, both at, at Cisco and at, at Google. I'm a, what I would think is an elder millennial. So I should probably have more hops in my career at this point, but I don't because I've, I've really been happy with the organizations I've been with. And I hope to, I get to uh, stay at Google longer too. If you're part of the movement, you know, I have a very strong point of view. I've sat on both sides of the table for over 30 years now. I've built growth through partnerships in PC, internet, cloud, mobile, AI, marketplaces, and more. I've also seen the demise of organizations that are resistant to change. I'm part of the communities, special interest groups, and associations, and I don't see one place that mirrors the ecosystem and brings it all together. You see, I see a vibrant world where hyperscalers, builders, ISV sellers, SIs, MSPs, and other partners come together to spark the ecosystem's growth. I've talked to many of you, and what I continually hear is it's noisy, I don't know whom to listen to, and where to go. There's a massive opportunity, but I'm not sure how to get there. Well, you've been heard. We're getting ready to open the doors early to pilot this new experience. We want this to be your place with your feedback and participation. If you're a builder, an innovator, or a leader, visit our website. Well, what I hear loud and clear is you've gone deep, right? Mm -hmm. You worked in an organization that was very partner-centric, a little bit more channel-centric, mm -hmm. it's called, the old school way of doing things. And then co-selling mm -hmm. at Google, like you were doing, you were a field seller, so you got, you got street cred, in my opinion. Uh, and then you've now, now you've integrated into this partner organization, which we, by the way, we've had Jim Anderson, mm -hmm. as you know, we've had his leadership team talking about precision partnering. Mm -hmm. Where exactly does your function sit in that partner organization? And what does it look like today? That's a great question. So this is something that, you know, moving the mystery around, how do I work with Google and what, where do people sit is something that we, we get asked yeah. a lot. It's a, it's a one, it's a great question and, and people need to understand what that looks like. We actually had a, a pretty cool event at the beginning of the year called Partner Kickstart, where we invited our partners to several different locations around North America, and they got to sit with our sales teams and then learn about the initiatives for this fiscal year, which was which was great to get everyone on the same page, but also just build momentum for the year and, and get started on the right foot. And, and through these sessions, each of us shared what this partner ecosystem looks like. And so typically when I have this question, I share a slide. So if people see me, you can always ask me for it, but I'll, I'll try to paint a, a picture here for you. Um, imagine- Please do. Yeah. So imagine two pieces of, of the organization that Jim runs, which is the North America partner ecosystem. On one side, we have this partner segment focused, and you've had plenty of these leaders on. We have our sell and service portion, which is led by Shelby Johnston. We have our solution SIs, which is led by Rebecca Potts. 
our GSI team that's led by uh, Gina Frederick-Kangeli, who's new, who you should have on. And then, of course, our ISV team, which is led by Scott Barneson. Now, within yes. each of their teams, they have, we've you know, that term we've said before is the partner development managers or ISV specialists. And these are folks that are, are specifically chartered with covering in one to few partners to make sure that they're building out a go-to-market strategy that can be launched at the North, North America level. And they're really looking to execute alongside these partners too, which is great. So intense precision partnering, as you said, with these particular partners to make sure we're being very intentional in our, our go-to-market motions. Now that's one side, that's partner segment. On the other side, we have our customer segment focus, and this is where I sit. So this is where we have the enterprise co-sell team, which is my team. We have our strategic accounts and industries co-sell team, which is led by James Hardy, who is, is new to Jim's team too. Uh, James and I really work closely because our teams do the same thing, just covering different sets of accounts. And so we get to collaborate sure. and, and share a lot of notes, which is great. Now, we have another new portion to the customer segment focus, and that is mid-market enterprise. This is led by Lainey Marks, who is, you know, just absolutely um, tough. She is competitive, and she's going after this business of mid-market enterprise. And this is new because we have taken a set of customers that sit what we call this mid-market enterprise, and we have decided we want to be completely partner-facing with them, which is great. So she has a team Very of nice. sellers that are their go-to-market is is always with and, and through a partner, which is great. And then finally, which makes a lot of sense, by the way, because the mid market has been underserved in general from a partner perspective, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah agreed. And, it, and there's so much opportunity there, I think. Yeah. And we see a lot of these these customers too that have either it's a niche product or the, a solution they're offering or the way they're built the organization should be reliant on working with a partner or building out their own ecosystem too. So I, I'm glad that she's chartered that this year. She's doing a phenomenal job. Um, the last piece of our, our customer, our focus teams is the Canada ecosystem, which is led by Megan Tanner, whom again is an, another force that you should have on, on the call too. So all of these folks are working together. Either we're out there with the customers and the sellers, making sure we know how to co-sell. We are working directly with customers. We're building up these partners and what the business they're doing with Google Cloud, but also the business that they're representing out there in the field. And our underlying teams here, are of course, partner engineering. And then we also have a Gen AI center of excellence where we are keenly focused on driving innovation through generative AI and cloud AI. Okay, so that's a pretty massive organization. <laughs> a There's a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> I'm a partner. I'm trying to figure out like, where do I start? Mm -hmm. Like, who do I work with? Can you help us there? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a, that's a great question. I will make this very simple. If you are a partner, meaning you have gone to our partner advantage portal, you've registered, you've gotten the right certifications, passed the test, you're in, it, you know, you should always still be working first with your account team. And that sounds a little weird, but I will say is that this could be your initial go-to and really that launchpad into further into the partner ecosystem. You would have an account team that has this you know, invest interest in how successful you are in the Google Cloud ecosystem. And they can also talk to their peers to make sure you're getting the right love to start with. Beyond that, as okay. we see partners really develop, what they have and their relationship with Google Cloud, we we do ask that they then dig in deeper to this partner advantage portal, which is going to provide them with a lot of training and access to information on how to build out a go to market, but also gives them a platform to then log opportunities, share that information so we can see, oh, this is a, a very relevant partner that's making an impact. Let's support them more uh, in that sense too. So I would say start with those two, but then as you as you progress within the Google Cloud ecosystem, we have folks like partner advisors that help you and, and partner development managers or ISC specialists. And then of course, you know that large team that I shared with you as well, uh, that's it's standing there with, with North America. And by the way, that's just one part of our ecosystem. We have a global team too. So I know you present to partners quite a bit mm -hmm. on these topics and how to help them be more successful. Mm -hmm. And I got a peek at some of your presentation materials before we had this conversation. Yeah. And you talk about this and I believe very much in how you show up, mm -hmm. right? How do you stand out? How do you differentiate yourself as a partner, right? Because now I'm a partner and there's all these other partners that are trying to 
you know, they're tugging on the teams to co-sell together. And I like to talk about being a shiny quarter and a bucket full of shiny quarters. Mm -hmm. That's one of the terms I use. Like, how do you show up differently, uniquely? How do I build an effective co-selling strategy that will resonate with your sellers and your customers, Chelsea? Yeah. So an, an, another great question that we do get frequently, when we see people that come into the ecosystem, they want to launch, they want to launch the right way. And, and so I do yeah. think it's good to level set, right? It's good to understand what you're offering. How do we position it with the field so that you do get the right amount of scale resources, as well as attention that you may need to be successful with us too. So I think you hit on one key point that I'm just going to underscore right now is around a differentiated value proposition. And so in some cases, if we're talking about an ISV or an independent software vendor, offering up that technical, technically differentiated solution is of mm -hmm. you know key importance. And I think any right. company out there that has built a product, they probably did it because they saw a gap in the market or a new market that they wanted to build out. So that can be a little bit easier for these partners. One thing we also right. like to say is take that solution and how you're differentiated, but then tie it back to Google Cloud too. So how does it actually work well with Google Cloud first party? And that will one, help our sellers understand, oh, these two work together. This is why they make sense. This is why it makes sense to our customers and really helps them resonate with that actual solution. Now, on the other side of that, if you're a services or sell partner, it may be a little, little more difficult. So you do want to then have a bit of a story. And I would actually tell everyone this in, in that if you have that 30 minutes with the seller, uh, we're really pushing our customers to say, yes, you may have your five minute pitch, which is great. I love a five minute pitch. You boil down to a shark tank type of thing. And, and we know really what we're going to get out of that conversation. But what I'm yep. shifting folks to, to do this year is to share a win story, because I do think those share can, a win story. Yeah, absolutely. A yeah. win story. It, tell me how you worked with a customer to win an opportunity and, and win over that customer to hopefully be a referenceable customer for you, because that's really gold standard, right? And not only do they enjoy the process of working with you, they enjoyed it so much that they're willing to be a reference for other customers and even maybe talk to your sales team or other sellers too to understand why. And so I'm pushing folks to do that five minute pitch, but also a five minute win story of how and why a customer would adopt your solution, your service, your technology. I do think that those things will go a long way. And we do internal win stories or what we call win wires as well, really sharing, hey, we're, we've just started to work with this customer. They decided to move forward with Google Cloud and this technology or this partner. And here's really what that co-sell process looked like. So I would say get, you know, get organized with the, those kind of the, the basics and the foundation there. Yep. But beyond that, there's always loads of content that people want to share with us. It's, you know, it could be an extensive pitch deck. It could be a list of qualifying questions. It could be architectures to review. It could be a Rolodex of people at the organization to co-sell with our sellers. And all that's fine. But I also do say, Hey, what is what is a good kind of walk away two pager? So you're going to have your your you know five minute pitch. You may have your win story, and then give us that battle card of information to get us to launch within the field teams. I think all those things you know will get started, and then of course you evolve from there. But um, it, you know it can look it look different for for everyone as well. I just got a note from a manager yesterday morning saying, "Hey, I just want to give props to." an ISV that showed up so well with my team. And what what nice. this ISV did was they they reached out to the manager, they asked for an account list, they went back and did their homework. They did account mapping, they said, here's where we are, here's where we're working with these customers, here's maybe where we need help. And then they recorded themselves giving an, a 10 minute or less overview of how they were gonna address this particular manager's team and really oh, wow. a little bit about their solution too. And that sort of preparation and forethought that took probably you know 30 minutes to an hour on the partner side set them up for success with this manager and then their team. And so that one interaction would lead to really a door opening at a, probably a hundred customers, which is pretty cool. Right. So I think so, little things like that go yeah. a long way. I'm so excited to continue our partnership with AG1. Many of you know I've made taking a green drink supplement part of my health ritual for over 21 years now. 
and it has made all the difference to my health and well-being. About six years ago, Athletic Greens and now their product, AG1, became my go-to supplement. AG1 is the first thing I take every morning to power my day. It covers all of my nutritional bases, supports my gut health, gives a boost to my immunity and energy levels. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash Vince M. That's drinkag1.com forward slash Vince M. Check them out. I think what you said too, like getting, you know, you called about the five, the, the elevator pitch, the mm-hmm. brand story. Uh, and then the customer account story, right? Like what, what did you do differently, better in that account? I think taking a, a, a seller through that process so they could personalize it and say, okay, this is how this partner can work with me more effectively. And then getting to the, the what's in it for me, uh, resonating with like, this is how you can win. We can win together by again, exposing the account list saying, Hey, these are the accounts where we have relevance. This is the white space opportunities we can go after together and coming to the table prepared like that. Just, it's so important. I think doing that is a, the best way to differentiate yourself in the market. Would you say? I, I absolutely think so. And I think it, it goes back to basics, which I think people forget about a lot. And I will say from my jump from Cisco to Google, I had to go back to basics, right? It was coming from a company that was number one in a lot of markets to a company that was not. And you, as I said, you get, I got more bumps and bruises along the way, but really taught me to go back and say, you've got to prove yourself. And that means you start at layer one there and, yeah. and really going back to basics will help. And I think doing that little bit of work again goes a long way for sure. So let's talk about marketplaces. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could probably spend the entire conversation here on marketplaces. It's, uh, I've been calling this the marketplace moment. I mean, it's, it's astounding to see uh, the uptake just in the very short period of time over the last couple of years now. Uh, The durable cloud budgets, right? Customers are making buying decisions at the executive level with Google. They're making large commitments. And this opportunity to show up differently and transact differently. We talked about millennial generation, Gen Z also not wanting, like doing things digitally. Our lives have changed since COVID, right? Um, How, and marketplaces are being a a bigger thing at GCP, right? I think that this is becoming a, a better vehicle, a way to bring multiple partners together. How do I initiate a conversation about GCP marketplace with a customer? Yeah, so I think this is another one that that we do get frequently, right? So we have ISVs that, again, have built products that run on Google Cloud, and they're available to purchase in our Google Cloud marketplace, which is in our billing console, or it's in our, our Google Cloud console, which is really where our customers go to build out projects with Google Cloud products, but it's very easy for them to then click over to the marketplace and say, hey, look, I need solution completeness or I want something that's out of the box. And I've got a a ton of solutions to pull from there. And and we do have an extensive marketplace. It's been building and growing. And you did have uh, Scott Barnison on last year, who's who's my boss. And and he's now, you know, over his year at Google has done an incredible job with really applying a lot of rigor in organization to how we go to market, how we show up with our partners, but also with our customers. And in that, he he has an individual that's also on his team named Pete Henderson, who I, if you're talking about marketplace, you got to get him on. Pete is our marketplace go to market lead. So what Pete does is really straddles that line between going to market where he's meeting with customers on a daily basis around the marketplace. And and sometimes these are very strategic, sometimes they're difficult conversations. And he takes back any feedback around features and functionality and make sure it gets to our marketplace global team to say, hey, can we start to make enhancements here? And I, you know, I, I love working with Pete. He's really one of my partners in crime here. And one thing we talk about often is this conversation of how to initiate the talk with with your customer around Google Cloud Marketplace or Marketplace in general. And we really try to to break it out in a couple of different ways. You're going to have a first-time user of the Marketplace. And in that case, I always coach our sellers to say, if you're having one a first-time call, a reset call with your customer, or just a general weekly update, 
you know, open up the Google Cloud Console, give them a quick tour and bring them over to the marketplace and share the show with them, hey, where it is, why our our teams, our customers use it, right? And why it's beneficial to them. And and have them ask some questions, but then bring in bring in the Google Cloud team or your, you know, the Google Marketplace team to again help you have those conversations as well. Also the co-sell team there. But th- that's one, it's getting getting a feel for where they are. Have they used a marketplace in the past? If it wasn't Google Cloud, great. That tells me they're open to the process. That tells me that procurement understands how to work they, with the They understand it, yes. Yeah. They understand it. So I don't mind that. I actually, I really like it because then we're not really trying to convince them to use the marketplace. We're just, you know, really giving the information on, hey, we, we have a marketplace. Here's why you should be using it. If you're also working with Google Cloud, or even if you're not, if you have partners that are listed in the marketplace, here's why it's also valuable to you and to them. And then that's one place. It's a very simple, straightforward conversation. On the other side of that, if you have a customer that has used the marketplace before, but maybe they haven't done what's called a private offer where they're negotiating directly with an ISV and that offer then comes through the marketplace for them to to click to accept. And it's maybe a more bespoke offer really tailored to their needs. They've done something maybe more like a, a click to subscribe, which is also totally okay. Or maybe they've done a trial, they've tested around, but nothing really substantial yet with Google Cloud Marketplace. And you want to get them more comfortable and confident. This is a maybe a little more of a sit down. It's one, hey, we've noticed you've been using the Google Cloud Marketplace. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you've been testing? How's that going? Do you, you know, how do you like the billing integration? And, and what else could you be using it for? And then the l- larger conversation is maybe with procurement too, to help them understand, hey, look, here's why it's valuable to our procurement teams. Here's why it's uh, it helpful for you on the financial side of things if you have a Google Cloud commit too. And so remove, as we said, that mystery of the what and the why of the marketplace to get them comfortable. And then I always say, handhold, handhold through that first purchase. So if you're a partner having this conversation around the Google Cloud Marketplace, bring the co-sell team in, bring the, your sales counterpart at Google Cloud to have the conversation too and, and be there and be ready when the customer does make that first purchase. We want to make sure it goes smoothly and that they come back and then they reroute all purchases through the marketplace. So that's what I mean by by handholding them and making sure they have a really, yeah. really good experience the first, first time or second time or third time or 20th time. Do you ever have uh, partners ask for prop- propensity data? So do they ever come to you and say, who are customers who are either underspent on their cloud commitments or might have a higher propensity to buy through Marketplace? You know, we do. Um, pretty confidential. Obviously, we can't, we can't share out, you know, hey, look, here's a list of our, our committed customers. These are customers that have really trusted us and, and, and put together a financial sure. agreement. But what we like to do is, is really give them the tools and resources to say, hey, look, you know, we do have some some mutual conversations going on or customers that are, you know, we're also working on, on projects together. Can you tell us how you may be working with them too? So this this goes back yeah. to that co-selling one-on-one of, of the give and take, yeah. right? If you're going to come and say, hey, can you tell us where all of your business is? We're going to, you know, probably not do yeah. that, but we'd like to understand, <laughs> hey, look, what kind of conversations are you also having? And I love that. I love when two sellers get together right? And they start talking about a mutual customer. And that way they can really, one, become more confident working with each other. And as you probably know, if you've been in in sales in the past, when you have someone that's also in the trenches, maybe another company, then you build trust. And then you also really, the the conversation evolves so much with there too. So we definitely, you know, have a give and take and make sure that we're both doing mutual sharing. But uh, again, of course, within within the realm of what we're allowed to do within, there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understood. <laughs> so let's take us through it. So we built our brand story. Mm-hmm. We've talked about win wires or successes that we've mm-hmm. had together, help, help illustrate the solution. Uh, we've gotten some success together working with the teams. We might've introduced marketplaces. We've gotten that flywheel going. Now that we've gotten our flywheel going for a period of time, what else can we do to drive more effective co-selling as as a more mature partner now working with you and your organization. Yeah, so 
you know, I, I love this question when I get this from partners, because it really tells me they're looking to continue to invest and grow their relationship with Google Cloud, right? And they're looking for coaching, they're looking for feedback, whatever it may be. Uh, so we always get to one, go to an idea board too and say, hey, let's figure out where you are and where do you want to be and get to be a little creative. But I give folks a, a bit of a roadmap and where I see you know, hey, here are some of our, our really what we may call gold standard or these partners that are, have been really successful. And we also look at those that maybe are just starting out. And so what we first see is, okay, a customers or partners decided to invest in Google Cloud. They're building out a go to market with us and they've become a partner. Ideally, we'd like that partner to then assign someone the Google Cloud relationship, meaning do you as a partner have someone that owns Google Cloud in terms of alliances, in terms of a channel there. And that means they're they're dedicated enough, they're invested enough to know it's a core part of their business to even hire someone or a team of someone to manage that relationship. And so we nice, say that's right. that's first check mark. Okay. Alliances, great. Because we also have that too. The second one is okay, we see alliances and they start to immediately engage with maybe their par counterpart at Google Cloud or sales directly. And I think those engagements are good, but they can only go so far. As you know, we just talked about this, where we really see things start to develop and grow is when an organization can get their sales team to talk to our sales team as well. And that means maybe they've been aligned on incentives. They've really said, hey, sellers at, at, at our partner, this is how you know, we're going to pay you if you, you, know, you work and you sell Google Cloud or with or through the, the marketplace, right? Or whatever else it may be, but it, they have some sort of interest in working with Google Cloud sellers and we get both of those group, groups working together. That creates a lot of this, this good gossip, a lot of champions internally, and we see more scale there. Those two can be pretty easy to, to check off. And the third one we really anchor on is, again, another point we've talked about is expanding a partnership within Google Cloud's partner ecosystem. So uh, say if you are an ISV, I, I find that a lot of them have said, okay, we're just going to work with the hyperscaler, right? And we're going to launch in the marketplace and that's it. But they haven't really adopted a resale strategy. They haven't adopted a services strategy. And so at some point along the sales cycle, they may be a little stuck. Maybe that's in the prospecting stage. Maybe it's in the final stage of implementation, but there's maybe a, a backlog or an area where they could really adopt business faster. And that means, hey, look, you, you're already part of this ecosystem. Why not lean in further? and find more partners that can really help you along the way. Again, maybe it's implementing services or reselling, and this can go into different ways, right? You're a sell partner of ours, and your customer keeps asking for a particular solution that you don't have in your book of business. Maybe Google Cloud does, or our marketplace does. Go strike up these relationships with those partners too. And then, you know, that third one is really services partners, which can say, yeah. hey, they, they may want to offer a solution completeness or they know I'm going to implement X. And then my customer is automatically going to go search for Y product uh, to really add on or see, hey, how is this other product actually running or working? And so you can really think about your business like that from the customer's perspective mm -hmm. is always really helpful. And then build yes. out what that co-sell strategy looks like. So I, I say these are three buckets that are pretty distinct and um, get a little more strategic as you go along. And then underlying that is really just this innovation threat. We talked about Gen AI, but that can be inclusive of other products. And that is taking that customer feedback to say, what are they really challenging you to do to maybe add to your product? Or what is the market really saying in terms of, hey, we like what you have to offer, but this is where things are headed. And using Google Cloud and our, the force of our engineering to really help you evolve your products and, and maybe even revolutionize them at some point too can can help you further along in that co-sell process. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And Google Next is next week. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I'm excited to be coming out to Vegas, although I'm not always excited to come <laughs> to Vegas. I am excited to come to Google Next next week. I know mm -hmm. you'll be there. What's in store for those listening and viewing today? Like what can they expect and where should they go? What are the best sessions that they should attend? 
Yeah, that's it. You know, a, a, another good one. So I, I think I'm excited to, uh, you know, likewise, not so excited about Vegas, but I think what I am excited about is Google Cloud Next. And it feels like we just Absolutely. had it because we did. But I, that's part of why I'm excited is because we get to take all the momentum that we had last year and we get to have it at the beginning of the year this year. Yeah. And now, even Love though the, the time in which we just had it out in San Francisco is, is much shorter now, there have been so many advancements and announcements, uh, certainly around cloud AI and generative AI that I think people are going to be excited to, to hear and see more about. So, you know, obviously yeah. tune into the, the keynote, get your seat there to make sure you hear what is the latest and greatest. Also, this is a partner podcast. So we have a specific area, partner summit area for our partners to come and join us. My favorite thing from last year was the expo hall. So we have our partners okay. that have set up booths and we've, these are our sponsoring partners. They have assigned kind of seating all around to really demo their products where you can meet with these partners. You can understand their value pitch and you can really see what's going on. Um, they have a lot of swag, of course. So if you've got, you know, friends or kids at home and you want to bring them a little souvenir, <laughs> you can load up on the water bottles and stickers and, and all the things you really want. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Bring an extra suitcase just for that if you can. Um, no, but yeah. So And also the parties. I know I heard there's like a hundred partner parties that are going to be going on. There are too many. <laughs> I think, yeah, we'll have to hire a driver for the night to just carry around from, from one part, party to yeah. another. But um, yeah, so all of that is going on. I think certainly the the partner keynote will be interesting. We do partner awards, but we really get to hear from our leaders at Google Cloud that share one the important importance of partnership and what are we driving together. And of course, you know that is something that will bring us through the remainder of the year. That sort of momentum and direction is something that we can all really anchor on and build our businesses around. Yeah. So Google Next. April 9th, 10th, and 11th yes. next week. Excited to have and to see you in person again, IRL. Likewise. Uh, I have one more, yeah, I have one more question. And it's a favorite question. I ask all my guests this question. You are hosting a dinner party mm -hmm. and you can invite any three guests from the present or the past to this amazing dinner party. You could, we could even talk about where you're gonna host that dinner party. <laughs> uh, whom would you invite, Chelsea, and why? Yeah, so I have listened to your podcast in the past. I knew this one was coming too. And so I, I thought about it a, a bit. Um, you know, I think what I, I would like to do, so in, in 2020, tough year for all of us, but unfortunately I lost uh, both of my grandfathers within months of each other. So that was tough. Obviously it, it, you know, was a huge, huge gap in our families and, and tough on my parents, of course. And, um, so I would certainly have them there just to have that that last meal because in 2020 you really couldn't go and, and visit people, right? Okay. We're locked down. Yeah. And so I think I'm just learning so much, even you know, after they both passed away about them and also really the marriages that they had with my grandmothers too, who are both around, thankfully. And so I'm gonna break your rules a little bit. I'm gonna give up my okay. seat and I'm gonna give both of those last two seats to my grandmother so they can have maybe a double date, a romantic dinner. I don't think they'll oh, want me lurking around, <laughs> but I do think that they would appreciate it. <laughs> well, we'll let you join. Meal. We'll let you join as well. You could be the, she could be the chaperone. As oh, well. Okay, I can, I can bring them their meals. They'd probably like that and clean up yeah. after them. Yeah, no, so I uh, think I would do I that. that. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's funny. I, I remember seeing you in, in New York and after we had that big day at the forum, we ran into each other, I ran into you and your, your wife and you guys were giddy to just get out around town and going to see your favorite French bakery and enjoy a bluebird New York City yes. day. And so I, I do think of course that marriage and partnerships are great and they both had some, some really strong ones. So I, I'm sure they'd appreciate that one last meal together. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. You've been an amazing guest, Chelsea. I so enjoyed spending time with you today. I'm so excited to see you next week. And if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, try to get out to Vegas for this event, or I know it's gonna also be live streamed as well. So listen, watch, uh, Google Cloud is on a tear. Uh, exciting time for our partner community. Chelsea, uh, my favorite subject, co-selling, having you on board, leading this very important function. Uh, excited to see what's next for you uh, and for Google Cloud.
Thank you so much, Vince. It's been great to be here. And I, I look forward to seeing you next week and, and to all the listeners as well. Hopefully I get to see you at Google Cloud next. All right. We're looking forward to seeing all of you at Google Cloud Next. Thank you so much for watching and listening to The Ultimate Guide to Partnering. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Ultimate Guide to Partnering. Online at ultimateguidetopartnering.com. If you liked this episode, I'd be thrilled if you left us up to a five-star review on either Apple or Spotify. This helps us to continue to feature amazing guests. Also, please check out and subscribe to our new YouTube channel, Ultimate Partner. We'll catch you next time on The Ultimate Guide to Partner.